Okay, so in the last video, we wrote our first test for our Angry Birds application. This unit test you see here that tests the debug description on our bird class. We'll write another test in this video, but before we do that, it makes sense to visualize our application so that we can look at what we're testing and what may still remain to be tested. I've made a diagram for you of our app. This is a data flow diagram as it tracks the flow of data through our application, from the JSON that we get from an external API, to the objects that we create from it, to the user interface objects that we use to display it. So far, we've tested debug functionality on this class right here, the bird. In this video, we'll go over to the other end of the diagram and test the connection between our external API and our bird service, right here. This is called an integration test because it tests the way that our application integrates with an external service. Let's get to work. So, the first thing we want to do is create a test class for our bird service. I click on the Angry Birds Tests target and I hit Command N on my keyboard. I want to create a unit test case class. So I click Next. And then I type bird service tests dot swift. That inherits from XC test case, just like the other set of unit tests we wrote. All right. And then we want this to go in the Angry Birds tests target. We click create. Great. Now we see we have the bird service tests class inheriting from XC test case. The first thing we'll want to do, just like last time, is import our target. Testable import angry birds. You'll see we have a couple of things in the scaffold here, including setup and teardown methods that would run before and after each test. I'll demonstrate how we might use these now. So suppose that we had a variable called system under test. This is a common naming convention for the object that we're testing in the test class. And this is a bird service. We'll force unwrap that and take responsibility for ensuring that it's present anywhere that we call it. In setup, we could set our system under test to be a bird service that we instantiate. Then self.systemUnderTest would always be assigned at the beginning of our test. Similarly, if we wanted to make sure that it were deallocated at the end of each test, we could do something like self.systemUnderTest equals nil in the teardown. In practice, we don't really need to do this for a test like this, because automatic reference counting in Swift will take care of deallocating objects for us that we're no longer referencing. But the teardown method can be useful if, for example, your test makes changes to a database, and you want to ensure that the database has been returned to its state before the test at the end of each test. Now we'll begin writing our test for the bird service. In this case, what we're testing is the external API. Our test name needs to begin with test for iOS to recognize it, and then we'll say test API, and what do we want it to do? We want to ensure that it returns a successful result. Now we type three blocks into our test. Our given, the circumstances under which we want the test to run, when, the behavior we're testing, and then the expectations that we have at the end of this test to ensure that what we're expecting matches our reality. The first thing we'll need is a couple of things into which to assign anything that gets returned from our API. So in our case, that's going to be birds, which is going to be a bird array. And we'll also need our error. And that will be the error class. Now, in order to write this test, we're going to use the promise functionality. Promise functionality is provided to us by the testing framework in iOS, and it, allow, it allows us to test asynchronous calls 
like the one that we have in our bird service. So here, let's name our next variable promise. And it's going to be the result of the expectation method, which is provided to us by the testing framework. Our expectation method allows us to input a description, which, when we option click on expectation we see, should be a string to display in the test log for this expectation to help diagnose failures. So what are we expecting to happen here? We're expecting that the completion handler is invoked. Good. So now we have our setup. Next, we want to call the method on the bird service that we're testing. Self dot system under test dot get birds. We get to define the closure that we would like for completing. So this will be data, or if there's no data, we would get a failure of some kind here. That having been said, because this test is testing specifically the happy path, I want to ensure that a failure isn't happening at this point. So I want to name these variables extremely clearly to indicate to another developer what should be happening in my test. Therefore, I'm going to rename failure shouldn't happen. Good. All right, so now we'll put things in our completion handler. I'd like to assign birds to the data that I got back from getbirds, the getbirds completion handler. And I would like to assign error to the thing that shouldn't happen. Finally, I'd like to fulfill the promise because at this point we know that the completion handler has, in fact, been invoked. Outside of the completion handler, we'll wait for our promise to return. So we return, we wait for an array of XC test expectations, which will include our promise. Then we'll set the timeout. Let's set our timeout to five. Finally, we have the opportunity to compare our expectations to reality. To do that, we'll use a matcher, XC test assert. XCT assert. So we have these various matchers to choose from. I want to ensure that my birds aren't nil. And I also want to ensure that my error is nil. Now when we run this test, we should see that it passes. I'll use command U to build my tests and then run them. Testing, testing. Wonderful. And the green check mark tells us that this test has succeeded for us. Now it's worth noting that back in our diagram, if something were to happen to the connection between the external API and our bird service, this test would fail. Now, in an integration test like this, there is a school of thought that says you don't want to include a test like this in your application test suite. The reason being that it could fail due to the behavior of dependencies that are out of your control, like this external API. Those tests are said to be flaky. And when we say flaky, what we mean is that there's something outside of the development team's control that could cause this test to pass or fail. The idea is that if a test is flaky because of external dependencies or configuration or what have you, then it will fail when the code is in fact working exactly the way it's supposed to. And that means that the signal that that test is providing, that something is broken, is low. And the noise it's creating, the frustration of having to get around a failing test, is high. So if a test is flaky, developers will start ignoring its results. Then the value of the test is extremely diminished because if the test fails for a reason that a developer should be paying attention to, the team has already learned not to pay attention to that test, which is why it's extremely important that we make sure that our test suites are robust and we're addressing tests that start to become flaky.
Now, I happen to think that an integration test like this is valuable. The reason being that as the developer of a mobile app that integrates with an external API, if that API goes down or changes, I want to know about it. I'll give you an example of why. Once I worked on a mobile development team at a company that had another team responsible for building the API that fed data to our mobile app. One day, the API team pushed changes that made the shape of the JSON response different than it used to be. Now, usually we would run our mobile app, we would discover this, it would break, and then we would go to the API team and we would talk to them about it. But we didn't actually have any integration tests in our application to tell us that the API had changed. The morning that they pushed those changes also happened to be a day that we were doing user testing on our mobile application, which meant that we were bringing customers of the company into the office to test new changes to our mobile application before we pushed them in a new version of our mobile app. We ran all of our tests before putting our latest build onto the user testing device, and they all passed. But unfortunately, when the designers handed the device to the customers to do user testing, nothing on the device was available because our mobile app could no longer get data from the now broken, upversioned API. And the customers had to sit there while the development team figured out what was wrong. Had we had an integration test in our application to catch something like that, then we might have been saved some time, frustration, and embarrassment as the customers waited for us to figure out what was wrong.